traveling mail. Hello from Anchorage, Alaska. We are so excited to be here. Alaska has been on our list for so long and we finally made it. So we are starting out in Anchorage and we're gonna be exploring the Kenai Peninsula and showing you all the fun things we found to do. There's gonna be a lot more, obviously, because we only have two weeks, but we're glad you are here to see our explorations of Alaska. big fan of dog sledding and the Iditarod. I'm super excited that we found the ceremonial start of the Iditarod here in Anchorage. And this guy. One of the free museums in Alaska is the Alaska Public Lands Information Centers and exhibits and things like that all about the public lands in Alaska. And Alaska has a lot of public lands. So we're excited to learn a little bit more about them. Who's the most excited? Anders is the most excited because he is a public lands aficionado. Okay, so one of the things we just learned is that you can't have a uh, pocket knife longer than two and a half inches in the building or even on the property. So I have to actually cross the street because I have a buck knife with me um, and that's not allowed. So. Melinda and the boys went in to look around. They're gonna take some videos and photos in there and we'll show you what we can show you from there. easy walk from downtown and in August or earlier in the summer you can see the salmon spawning up the creek. There's this great restaurant you can eat at and a place you can even rent fishing gear if you want to fish yourself. We're here just a little bit late for that so we're just seeing some of the dead fish float down the river. The autumn, which is red currant and uh, walnut almond cookies. Apple cider donut. It's good. Can I eat it now? I'm an actress and a singer. I did a lot of musical comedy show about the history of Alaska for over 20 years on stage every night. Plus, we have 3 million lakes, 28 of the larger, but they found the rarity. We have left Anchorage, and the farther we drive, the more beautiful it gets, and I'm so excited to be out and cannot wait till we actually get out, out and into this. It's just calling me. We have taken a bit of a pause on our way to Cooper's Landing to see the boar tide come in at, uh, I think it's boar tide observation point two, um, just north of Girdwood. We did go into Girdwood and grabbed a beer and uh, coffee and that sort of thing. But we're looking out over these tidal flats, hoping to see a big surge of boar tide.
have a beautiful day to hike up to Exit Glacier and beyond to the Harding Ice Field. And we're so excited. This is definitely going to be a highlight of the trip, I believe. To see these glaciers and this ice field up close is going to be spectacular. So round trip, it's around nine miles-ish and 3,000 feet elevation gain. But you can get to Exit Glacier in maybe a little less than half the mile and pretty flat. How, how long does it usually take people to go up to the Harding Ice Field? Uh, for the Harding Ice Field Trail, it's quite a bit longer. On the drive in and along the trail, there are all these signs with dates on them, and they show you where the Exit Glacier was at different times in history. So, here's how far it came out in 1917. And it has gone back a long way. Even some of the intervals that are only five years apart, there's this huge, huge space. you guys look at this I am beyond excited to be up here I misled you it's only four miles each way but man is it steep but then you get to this the largest ice field totally in the United States second largest in the US and Canada and awesome just super awesome <music> Sunny Cove kayaking and we're so excited. We are just outside of Seward and on the water and it's sunny. It, well, it's not sunny, but it's not raining and it smells good like ocean. We're hoping to see some critters and some beautiful landscape. Morning. It is a rainy and possibly very stormy day here in uh, Seward, but we are still going out on the boat with Kenai Fjords tours to see some glaciers and wildlife and whales. And because it is going to be stormy out there, we were offered to either reschedule or um, get a refund, but we're going to go anyway because we don't have that much time and we're really excited to get out there. But we did purchase some. Uh, motion sickness bands just in case and other than that here we go
despite a little bit of rough seas, we had a really great trip and saw all the critters we wanted to see, tons of otters and seals and glaciers calving. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. Such a great trip. So I'm so happy we decided to go with Kenai Fjords and I'm so happy that we got to see all these like iconic Alaskan things. Before we leave Seward, we had to check out the Alaska Sea Life Center. It's been highly recommended by so many people and we knew we couldn't miss it. It is pretty pricey, but the, uh, the money goes to research and um, education and also to taking care of animals in the sea that get harmed. It was set up after the Valdez oil spill to um, research and rehab animals. So we're excited to take a look. Now I'm ready to add my name to the people who recommend coming to the Sea Life Center if you are in Seward. It's really fun to see all the critters. It's a great um, educational message and so much to learn about the area and what we can do to take better care of it. This afternoon, now that uh, summer has turned to fall here, it seems in just a matter of days, we're going for a little walk up to Russian Falls. It is just west of Cooper's Landing and this is a place where salmon spawn and often you can see grizzly bears fishing. I think we may be a little late in the season for it. I don't know but we might see bears so we're well protected with our we both have we have two cans of bear spray and we'll make noise and have good bear manners along the way. is a hiking day for us here in Homer. It's meant to rain a little bit at some point, but it hasn't started yet. We took a taxi up to the Diamond Creek, Diamond Gulch trailhead because we wanna go one way, even though we have a rental car. And then we're gonna hike down to the beach and swing a left and hike uh, six or seven miles back into town to Bishop's Beach and back to our house. One thing to remember when you're uh, doing this hike along the beach is you need to pay attention to the tides because at high tide there is no beach uh, or very little and it can be pretty sketchy so you also need to be aware of tidal silts apparently. Uh, our, we're starting about midway between high tide and low tide and which low tide is about one o'clock so we should have plenty of time to safely get back to Bishop's Beach. just got down to the beach and there's a whole pod of sea otters out there which is really cool. Thankfully we remembered to bring binoculars with us on this trip because we don't always do that but they're really great for looking at all these little critters. They're so cute.
Today we've joined the cast of Alone. We've been dropped off on this remote beach by Lance in this boat. And now we have to survive for as long as possible on seaweed and fish heads. And sea stars. And sea stars. Obviously, we are not actually joining the cast of Alone, but we are alone out here. Um, we're going on a hike, which is normally, I think, a pretty popular tourist hike. But in the middle of September, there really isn't anyone else out here. And we took the water taxi to the trailhead, Glacier Spit, and then we're gonna hike out to a glacier and a lake and icebergs and get picked up farther down the coast at another trailhead. Cool. walked about 2.7 miles and half a mile left to get to the lake so we're taking a little spur out the trail is super plush flat wide um, the epitome of Alaska easy as I read about another trail somewhere and it started out kind of rainy today but the Sun has come out and actually now it's starting to rain again so we're just ready for whatever the day brings you guys. That was so cool. Oh my gosh. And that is a pun, but also the reality of it. Seeing those icebergs bobbing up and down. We saw one roll over. Colors, the big glacier in the background. You should come here. We're hosted by Alaska Hotel and it is such a nice way to wrap up our trip in Alaska. We still have one more day and one really fun thing to do, but being able to stay in this nice hotel and take advantage of all the nice restaurants and the tram and all the activities and just relax and luxuriate a little bit was a real treat. 
Our original plan was to stay almost exclusively on the Kenai Peninsula, but we kind of had this open day and we still have the rental car. So we decided to drive up to Hatcher Pass, which is about 45 minutes north of Anchorage. And we are in an Alaska State Park, Independence Mine State Park. And oh my gosh, look at this scenery, you guys. It's outrageous. I'm so glad we came up here. And right now when it's so fall-like with the oranges and the reds and the yellows, but then the snow on the top of the mountains, it's amazing. And there's gold mine history and stuff here, but what we're really here for is the big mountains. Today we are out with Salmonberry Tours out of Anchorage. They picked us up at our hotel this morning and drove us out to this amazing glacier. And we are going to don micro spikes and helmets and go and walk on this thing, which is gonna be really fun. The way up, the fall colors were out of control. We stopped twice along the way to see some things uh, before arriving at the glacier and afterwards we'll go and have some lunch. Just the drive up here in itself was, was worth the trip. Mm -hmm. 